Hello everyone, my name is Ken Metrol, the founder of Cosmico Studios, and today I want to talk to you a bit about minimalism, specifically web design minimalism. Today's topic is five ways minimalist web design boosts sales. So I've been a huge proponent of simplicity, minimalism, and I try to apply that to everything in my life, from my personal life to my business to literally everything because I've noticed that simplicity and minimalism is honestly the best way to achieve pure happiness, to achieve your goals you want to reach and without having to make things so difficult by just applying such simple rules to everything in life, especially your website, so that you can produce more of the results you want. So in this case for your website, either that means more sales for your e-commerce store or more leads for your product or your service that you provide, so I'm gonna go through five ways that applying this minimalist mindset can help you grow your business by applying it to your website. So in minimalist style, I wanna keep it very simple so that you have a very good understanding and without any confusion because the last thing I wanna do is confuse you guys and then you won't really get the point in doing this video. And maybe you can apply this to not only your website, put but even to your business. A quick book that I read a couple years back is the 80-20 principle, which basically states, going based off the principles of minimalism and simplicity, but all goes to 80-20, meaning that 80% of your results come from 20% of your actions, or 80% of your output comes from 20% of the input, and this applies the same to the websites. So let's go through the first one, which is applying minimalism will give you faster load times. Faster load time. And how so? One is if you optimize your images, assets, graphics, anything, visual elements, if those are optimized by size, meaning that they're compressed, that helps a lot with reducing the uh, load time of your website. So it's first optimize images, elements, let's put, I guess, visual elements, visual elements, other graphics, even animations, also by optimizing your assets that is not only just compressing the size, but also not having so many images, not having so many videos or graphics or animations, kind of tone it down to 20%, which produces the most effect on the user. And doing so would also simplify your code base. Simplify code base. Meaning that there is less to process on the website, less images to load, less animations to load, less HTML, CSS, JavaScript, having less clutter so that the website can load much faster. That helps a lot. And by doing all these, it will reduce also the server load. So having a simple minimalist style website, it reduces the load time on the server itself so that when someone reaches your website, they don't have to download so much information, so much data, which then will slow down your website. And again, going minimalist and simple, simplest and sim using uh, simplification doesn't mean you just have to be bland or boring or just basic, but it's more of just applying what really stands out and what really works to convert that user or that customer, rather than just uh, filling out the website with a bunch of junk that doesn't even work to convince the customer of your product or your service. So that was number one. Four more to go. So number two is that it enhances user experience. Enhances user experience. UX. So user experience or UX is basically how you interact with the website, how you feel, how your emotions that when, once you land on that website, if you're having a good time on the website or a bad time, whether you want to stay longer or leave, that all goes to, into the experience of the product, in this case being the website. So by applying minimalism and simplicity, you can apply that towards your navigation. So having a clear navigation 
meaning less items or elements in your navigation, making it simple. Instead of having 10 links, have just five or even four of the most important. And the rest you can hide at the bottom in a footer or somewhere else that's not prominent. So it'll help you clear up your navigation, which makes the experience much better. It also promotes design consistency. Consistency. If you have the same design across the whole website, it's easier to digest as a new user that lands on your website. If things are just using different colors and different layouts and different graphics all over the place and it looks too cluttered, again, I'm going to have a bad experience and just leave your website and not even want to learn more about your services or your product. And also by minimize, minimize, uh, minimizing the white space used, uh, let's put here utilization. Some ways could be to reduce a lot of white space. If you have a lot, might have a lot of white space on your website, specifically your services page or your home page. Instead of having such a long page that people have to scroll through, if you remove that white space, it makes it a much more simplified, concise version of what you want the user, your customer to uh, digest quickly. And you can go too far by removing too much white space because then that means there's no way to really uh, digest or even consume what you're trying to uh, convey, whether it's an image or, or text or call to actions, you want to just have a nice balance of not having too much white space, but not having too little white space. All that goes back to the elements of minimalism, especially in web design. Okay. Now, number three. Okay, we're almost halfway there, guys. Three would be Improved mobile experience. So going on to the last one, which was the user experience that goes along with the mobile experience. So you have to apply not only the same uh, ideas or minimalism, simplicity to your desktop version, but also to the mobile version, which is honestly where most people are on nowadays. I think it's around 60% of people or 70% of people are usually gonna visit your website through their phone rather than on their laptop or their desktop. So you have to make sure that your website not only looks great on the desktop, but also great on mobile. And that means applying the same minimalist ideas and tactics on your mobile version. So by doing this, you have a responsive design, meaning that it looks the same on desktop, the same on tablets, the same on phones. This is very important because you don't know where your user, your customer might be using. Most likely might be mobile, but you can't be guaranteed on that. So you have to make sure it looks good on the desktop, mobile, and tablets, just to make sure you cover all your bases. Having a optimized mobile experience gives it also a touch-friendly uh, interfaces. I'll tell you right now why, what that means. Touch friendly interfaces. So on desktops, you lose, you're used to clicking with your mouse on a button or a link or any type of other uh, call to action. But here, for example, since you're on your phone, some people have smaller screens or maybe they might not see that well. So you have to have your buttons big enough so that they can easily click on them. Because although you might think it's obvious on desktop, where it's much easier with the mouse and the bigger screen, on phones, everything's all compressed. So that means your buttons have to be just as big so that when you click on them or touch them with your, with your fingers, you can actually uh, take action and not cause it to bug out or they'll just lose interest because the buttons don't work. So make sure your buttons are actually touch friendly on mobile devices, especially more phones than tablets. And lastly here, it will also give you streamlined content. So streamlined content, again, reduces clutter. So whether you're visiting on desktop, tablet, or mobile, it's still less clutter. So let's say you visit the site on the mobile device and then you want to finish your experience on the desktop. The user knows where they left off. It's not hard to find the, their way back into what they were reading, whether it be a blog post on your website or about your services or your contact page. So if there's a, a huge, uh, not a huge, but a, just a more streamlined 
way of conveying all the content and your services in a, in a nice fashion that works across all devices. Okay, now let's go to number four. So here, number four, it is easier navigation. So I touched on this back in the user experience. Again, this all kind of goes aligned to everything I'm speaking about. But having this minimalist or simplistic design applied to your website goes a long, a long way, especially for the navigation, because people that visit your website don't know where to go. So if you make it easy for them and simplified, they can find a way to learn more about your services, your product, contact you guys, or even venture out and read a blog post. So this brings simplified menu structure. Not having so many links in your menu and even in the drop downs, keep it very concise, simple, apply the 80-20 rule. Again, 80-20 is one of the best principles I've learned in my life and applying that to even sales and to marketing and to your website goes a long way. Reducing, reducing, reducing to the most important and most efficient buttons or pages or services that you provide. This also goes along with consistent interface elements. So being consistent along with before when I said about the mobile experience and working great across all devices, here you make sure that the icons go along with the buttons on the website, go along with the animations, make sure everything is aligned, looks, looks the same, and ultimately is not hard to understand and digest what their user is trying to uh, learn about your services on your website. And also reducing the navigation to a very simple 80-20 rule applications is that it can also focus on search. So let's say that you have the most prominent links on your mobile structure on your, on your navigation menu, but the user probably didn't find what they want. By reducing the amount of clutter you have on the menu, makes more space to the, for the search bar or the search function so that the user can easily search what they want, whether it be a specific product or a specific service that they couldn't find on your navigation menu. And it doesn't mean that you should add that service or that page or that product to your navigation because not everyone's gonna need that. So why clutter up the menu with stuff that people won't even use? Again, that could be that 20% that of people that just give you 80% of the uh, issues or even I'm saying it right, but you kind, of get, you kind of get what I'm saying. Don't change your whole menu just for a couple people. Make sure you follow what their actions are and and take and take uh, take into effect what people are actually clicking on and what their what pages they're reading and uh, landing on. Okay, and lastly, number five. would be probably the most important, I would say, is focused call to actions, or CTAs. So CTAs are essentially what they want the, the action of the user to take, whether it is to purchase, or to learn more, or to subscribe, or to yeah, do a free trial. The ultimate action you want them to take Applying minimalism and simplicity to the website also applies to the CTAs. And what does that mean? One is prominent placement. Prominent placement. That means reducing your CTAs, not having so many CTAs all over, which, trust me, I want to have CTAs all over, all over our website and over our clients' websites, but sometimes it may be too pushy, too salesy to have that button everywhere. Let the user really take their time, read, learn what they want to learn about your services or your company, but then have it easy for them to click on your CTA to do the consulting or to buy now, or to contact you. It makes more of an impact having one button or one CTA versus having three or five, but I would say keep it to like maybe two max three per page and 
if you already have it on the navigation menu, which goes along with you, if it's sticky and it, and it follows you all the way down through the page, you might even just to have maybe two more on each page if you really want to. But again, if you have it on the navigation menu, they can click it at any time. So again, maybe having one is better than two, but you can just try and test out to see how users react. One would be also contrasting colors. This applies more to just uh, web design 101. It's having colors that contrast the background of the website. You don't want the colors of the CTAs to be the same color as the background of the website because then the user can't see it, they can't click it, and it won't make a huge impact that you want them to take, whether it be to learn more or sign up or contact you. When it's using the right contrast color, whether black and white or green and red or yellow and what other? colors yellow with you get the point make sure that it's, the color is stands out a lot and that you don't have so many just have one but with a nice strong color that goes against the website's background that really clicks the user to really take more action and also lastly here is like I said before a limiting uh, it has limiting choices so not having so many CTAs is actually very uh, efficient because again, you don't want to be so pushy on the sales part or try to, co to convert the customer so fast. Let them take their time, let them read, learn about your services or your product, and then, don't, and then you, you have the button there where it's easy for them to take action but not so much in their face all the time and just being annoying. You don't want to be annoying. You want to let them take their time, relax, and trust me, people are smart. They can find a way to contact you or reach out to you. So don't make it too hard or don't make it too easy. Just have enough. And it all goes down to the ideas of simplicity and minimalism, which I said not only applies to your website, but applies to your marketing efforts, applies to your business, applies to everything. Even the 80-20 principle, which you guys can read it up or even purchase a book on Amazon, this is a life changer, especially for business. And lastly, to apply all of these changes, it depends on which CMS you're using, whether it's WordPress or Wix or Squarespace or even Contentful or Ghost or Framer. There's so many nowadays. But our preferred choice is always Webflow. So Webflow is a CMS. You might have heard of it. Uh, they make they basically apply all these principles into the design of the platform to make things easy, simple, effective. So if you're gonna redesign your website, please take into consideration Webflow. And we've done a ton of Webflow sites. It's one of our favorite platforms to work on. So if you want us to reach out, if you wanna reach out to us, uh, visit our website at cosmicalstudios.com. And we'll take a look talk with you, let you know whether Webflow is a good fit for your website. Most likely it will be, and we can apply all of these changes to your new website, which ultimately would take you closer to the goal of having more sales or more prospects or more leads. Either way, I hope you still learned something new. Again, this not only applies to website sites, but applies to your marketing efforts, to your business, to your life. So make sure you follow what I say because it has changed my life, and I think it will change yours as well. Again, thank you for watching, and if you have any questions, please reach out to us uh, by leaving a comment on the video or visit our website, cosmicalstudios.com, and uh, write to us there. Thank you, and have a great day. Bye.